um, what I'm going to bring, I want it to come um, with real clarity only because I feel I have my whole thoughts have also been turned and I just want it to come out right. So just pray that I do that. Um, when we were praying for it, um, the word came to me, uh, the word correct. And I believe that the Lord is correcting uh, a thought that she has had. And he wants to correct it. So I believe that is working uh, in her behalf. It's, it's a good thing. I know when we say correct, sometimes we think we're going to get um, corrected for something that we've done. But no, this is God's correcting something that he sees that needs to be corrected. It's not going to do anything other than be like a light bulb for her. So just trust that the Lord is going to follow through with that. What I want to bring today is so powerful. I um, I said yesterday that uh, we we read in Isaiah fifty nine, God's uh, hand is not too short that it cannot save, nor is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But it's about the the sinful sin factor that blocks man from seeing God, and that's the the very gap that I was talking about. Now, uh, he, Jesus Christ, he looked for a intercessor and he couldn't find one. And what he, what this scripture was saying was, there wasn't in man what was needed. He needed someone that was going to be like, was going to be Jesus Christ without sin, who would be the intercessor to fill the gap. And so, um, not that there wasn't intercessors. There was. There was intercessors. Uh, but mainly those intercessors were for Israel and about the concerns of Israel. But now we have uh, Jesus Christ, who is the intercessor for the whole world, for everybody. And this is what God wanted to do. Now I'm going to start... Uh, this is God's, God's, God has had intercessors through all the ages, but not to the whole world. They would intercede for Israel, but not for the lost souls of the whole world. Now the perfect lamb would be the intercessor. The one without sin would come to the throne and speak the will of God. Okay. Um, I'm going to read in Romans 11. One through... I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I am, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not, what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars. And I am left alone and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then is it no work of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it, it, is it no more grace? Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest was blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, let their trouble be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. 
and let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see and bow down their back all the way. Okay, this was an insight of intercession between um, God and man. And as I read it, you heard the answers that God had given. The idea here, and I want this is what I'm trying to bring in, is when the Lord came, I'm going to go to Acts. When the Lord came uh, back from the dead and was was in, um, and he was getting ready to to be ascended, he came to the disciples. And he, and he said these things. And I'm going to go ahead and read from the, the book here now, from the Bible, Acts. It says, um, The former tra- uh, treaties have I made, uh, O Theopolis, and all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up after that, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he shewed himself alive, after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which saith he ye have heard of me for John truly baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence when they therefore were come together they asked of him saying Lord, wilt thou at the time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times of the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye will be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, they were while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And they looked steadfast toward heaven as he went up. Behold, two men stood by them uh, in white apparel, which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then return, uh, they, then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Allah, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And then they, uh, take, they take care of some business uh, because of uh, Judas. Uh, but they all assembled themselves in, in the upper room where God had instructed them to do. Now, okay. Remember, uh, I told you that intercessors, um, when we see a problem, and we intercede, we are putting a stop sign to the enemy. In other words, uh, the enemy has got full throttle ahead unless we intercede and prevent the enemy from doing whatever he's trying to do in whatever situation it might be that we're, that the Lord has given us to see. So intercessors um, are part of intervening and making um, what the enemy has full throttle ahead to do uh, bring him to us to a stop and that's what an station can do now this is this is um find here okay i want to start here in my notes i just read to you uh, in Acts. so god's plan was to multiply himself so what did he tell the disciples go into the upper room and wait for the comforter or pray for the comforter and so they, that's what they did. They went up in the upper room. There's about 120 of them up there. Even the mother of, uh, of Jesus was in the upper room. And so uh, he wanted to multiply himself through the Holy Ghost, the comforter. So now the enemy of our souls would have to contend with not one Jesus, but multiple. Because within every one, Christ lives and guides and directs and speaks through their prayers, their intercessions, directed by the heavenly language of the Holy Ghost to speak the perfect will of God. Our hearts now plugged into his love, 
his yes. power, his hope. Thank you. And and then look what happened. 3,000 souls were added. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? That's a lot of people in one day. And then it says uh, that he um, also added daily as the Lord you know, saw fit to do. God multiplied the fire, spreading himself through the new believers. The only recourse the enemy had was to try to convince the new believers through their flesh to lose faith in what they had. The comforter of promise and to turn back again to the flesh. That's what, that was the only course he had. The enemy cannot multiply himself. It's just him and his imps. And he doesn't want us to know the power we have over him. He knows if we discover what we have, the power we have in intercession, we will put a stop to his efforts to do his evils through God's creation. We will put stop signs in those efforts and mess with his plans to steal, kill, and destroy. If he can get your attention to see it through Earth's Earth point of view, he can block you from interfering. Get, your, get you focused on situations and not, uh, uh, the, not a, uh, and his power to turn things around. In other words, uh, he doesn't want you to, to uh, see what your intercession is going to do. He puts a damper on that. So uh, the, the main thing here is the Lord, his plan was when he, you know, he, he rose from the uh, the dead and he uh, ascended up into heaven. He left. He said, "Go to the upper room." He was going to fill them with himself, the Comforter, and now multiply himself. This was this is what God's plan was, and now not there's not one Jesus walking around in the world, but there's multiple. Inside of every believer is God himself. He has planted himself in every believer. So now what the believer has is the divine assistance in living for him. And the enemy, the enemy is in trouble. We're going to go to um, Romans Eight twenty six. I'm going to go ahead and read there. It says likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, and that means uttered in our own language. So we utter in this in this Holy Spirit's language. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. And justifieth, it means having or shown to have a just, right, or reasonable basis. So, our our whole focus is on the move of God and how he deals with it. And we must always believe that God's justification is right. We if we enter in our own thoughts about things and how they should be, we may be wrong. If we're Sizing it up to who's wrong, God or me? I'm going to say me. God, whatever God does, he does in a perfect will of God. So he, he's moving 
on a purpose and a purpose that we may not even see the whole of it. We just know that we trust in our God that he knows what he's doing, what he's, what he, what he, uh, what he says he wants to do. And we have to back him because he, he is perfect in all of his way. He doesn't, whatever he does is a perfect way. And our way is not perfect. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. And that right hand is power. So he's he's got this power. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, and we are counted as sheep uh, for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things are we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Now, see, when we see uh, when we see these th- negative things, this distress and this tribulation and this persecution, we see it as negative. But God is saying we are conquerors. So in those things, God doesn't leave us in them to destroy us. But he he pulls us up into victory. And it's through those things that we see God and his power moving and working. Yes, uh, what she's going through is a very negative thing. But God wants it to be victorious thing and he is going to bring that out he's he, he's going to bring her into that mode of conquering she's not a she's not a victim she's a victor and it's going to be through him that loved us for i'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come no height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now see, we have this loving, caring God who is in control. And he has given us power because he lives in us. He is power. He is hope. Sister um, uh, Wilk, she read in Isaiah, the 61st. Uh, chapter and it's it, all about what God wanted to do what he he was his plan was and he said the the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound see Satan had a heyday he was having his way and there was, there was nobody to interfere with him. Only those who would pray for certain things, but for the whole world, the whole world was being driven by an evil spirit. And here, God wanted to come and bring um, uh, liberty to the captives. He wanted to uh, bind up the brokenhearted. He wanted to proclaim liberty to the, those that are in the prisons, open the prisons to them that are bound. God wanted to set free what Satan was trying to bind up and destroy. God wanted to come and release and bring uh, good things, bring uh, the power inside of man. He wanted to. He wanted that gap between man and 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 God to be filled with an intercessor, so that they could come in and break down the, the barriers that s- Satan was putting there. And what he was causing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God. God wanted some vengeance, not on human beings, upon the enemy who is causing all this trouble to comfort all that mourn. God wanted to come and be this balm of Gilead. He wanted to be that very thing that was going to to. Be the compassionate, caring uh, uh, entity because they were being so uh, 
ravaged by the enemy who wanted to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. You see, he wanted to raise us up from defeat and victim, uh, being the victim and to the victory. He wanted someone there to pull us into victory. And when we have him living inside of us, we have the victor there. And this, this God who lives within us now is able to speak to us individually because we have Jesus walking with us as the disciples in the day that he walked on the earth in a physical form. Now we have the same Jesus, really, just not a physical form because our faith now is to be, to believe in this God who did give us uh, this gift of the Holy Spirit so that we would not be alone on an individual basis. In other words, I I might be here, but I have Jesus with me. So I have the victor, and he's going to help me in every step of my life. He's going to be there to, to bring me through all these things that I might be going through. He's going to bring me through. That was his plan. To multiply himself so that he was not on the outside, but on the inside. And he could go with all of us and walk in our individual lives and we would have his help, his hope. And he would be speaking to us on a consistent basis. He would be guiding us and directing us because he, he, is, the, he is the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Uh, th these, are, these are the things he wanted to be for us and he wanted it to be in us. And they shall build the old waste, and they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the, dis the desolations of many generations. You see, uh, he's using the intercessors to rebuild. Whatever the enemy is trying to tear down and destroy, intercessors are coming back, and we are rebuilding through our intercession. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. And ye shall be named the priest of the Lord, and shall be called you the ministers of our God, and he shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in uh, their glory shall ye boast to yourselves. For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double, everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment, and I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. But you see, God is going to correct whatever the enemy's doing. He is in trouble because as intercessors, we have power. We have power to build up what's been torn down. We have power to correct what has been a miss, a misleading. This is what's, what God is doing in intercession. It's a powerful, powerful understanding that we have his help now. He is the divine assistance that I, that I had talked about. And when there is a perplexed problem, we have the source of the right, perfect way to be to be able to go to him and say, look, this is what's going on. And, uh, and then the Lord will begin to move upon us to intercede for that. And what a powerful thing. Because the Lord said, whatever uh, is the will of God, if we speak those things, of, it's the will of God, we shall have them. Well, that's, what he, that's why we do intercession. So we will know the will of God, whether it be in our own language or whether it be in the language that God has given us when we receive the Holy Ghost. That language is uh, the perfect will of God being as we intercede. We're, we're speaking the will of God in that. And sometimes we get to see uh, what the Lord is doing with it. 
such as what we've heard today. Some of you saw this, and some of you saw that. Well, that was that was part of the interceding. God wanted us to see that there's this is not a even though it's a sad thing, and I was sad with it as well, but it's it's not sad in a in its extent because we have this victor inside of us that is bringing it going to bring it to victory he's going to help through all this this is what this is what the holy ghost is all about multiple multiplying jesus in all of us and him teaching us how to walk uprightly and to be holy in a in a very unholy uh time of life we are still being able to walk in righteousness and know what is right the right way to go and he he wants to bless his people he wants us to to not feel alone he don't want us to feel like we have no way out he don't want us to feel defeated he don't want and, and i'm talking about feelings now he wants us to feel that we have access to the perfect way the ac- access to the intervention to put the stop sign on the and the skids upon the enemy who is trying to come in and, and bring trouble. And we have access to him, to the power of our God who made all things. He's made it accessible to us as he did on the day of Pentecost. Now he multiplied himself. He's multiplied himself and we are out there. We are being conquerors because he is the one that can lead us into that very pathway of conquering. I just got excited when Sister Wilkes was reading all this today. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. And he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. And as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornament and a as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are grown, sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. See, the world doesn't know how to, to uh, all they see is, is in their circumstance, circumstances is, is that they're victims. But we who know our God, We don't see ourselves as that because we know the victor and the one who can change everything and help us to to do that. He empowers us as we speak in intercession. He's empowering us to speak the very will of God for that situation or for that person. And God begins to move because it's the will of God to do It's the will of God to bring us all into that place of victory. That it was his time. None of us do that. But guess what? He is in, he is in the place that he's been, uh, you know, we, we talk about, uh, going to heaven and we talk about, you know, the day we're going to get to see God. Well, he's there now. He's, he's accomplished. He's a victor. He did. He's not a defeated foe. Has a new husband. That's the Lord mm-hmm. himself. Mm-hmm. He said he was going to be the husband to the widow. Yes. And he's going to be just that. God takes care of, God will take care of her perfectly. And he's going to be with her. And he's going to show himself strong. And, you know, man on earth is not perfect. But the mm-hmm. God, the God of heaven is perfect. He will, he's the perfect gentleman. He knows how to speak wonderful, loving and caring things. And I'm sure this, this will be what he's going to do. We just have to uh, understand the power that God has put in us. And that uh, being an intercessor is almost the ultimate goal that God intended so now he's the intercessor. He made the he's he's filled the gap between the sin problem and the and God, and then we take we are part of that intercession that he is. 
and we come and we make intercession. So there's a multiple thing going on there. God is interceding. Jesus, the one at the right hand, the power, he's interceding, he's always interceding for us. And I have some scripture here I haven't read yet, but that, that tells you that. But now, not only that, but we're interceding. Can you see the cry of victory going before the Lord on a consistent basis? I mean, that from, from earth to heaven and from heaven flowing down, it's a constant move. Our intercession and the move of God is going on and on and on throughout all kinds of situations that's going on in the face of this earth. God's got many intercessors. It's not like the one I read here. It says he thought he was the only one left. Mm. And, and, uh, uh, and I don't have a scripture here it is he thought he was the only one left but God showed him he had uh, 7,000 I think he says so you know God God isn't uh, he, he's not in diminishing numbers he's in uh, making the numbers go up not down multiplication multiplication thank you that's what he's got and uh, I, I'm just, I looked in the mirror this morning. I go, you know what, devil? You are in lots of trouble. Yes, yes. And you you don't have any foothold. Hmm. And you, you are a defeated foe. That's what I told him this morning. I said, I have Jesus living inside of me. You are in trouble. Mm. I just... I just felt such victory this morning. And I know that God wants that to be in our hearts. We and Sister Wilkes, you were just you were talking that way. You said mm-hmm. you said that you're that all you could think of was hope. Yes. And that's yes. what God wants you. You were saying, but I, why should I be thinking hope when the no? Because you know what's going on inside of you oh. was this conflict. Oh. The enemy wants you to go down, but the Lord wants you to go up. Come on. They want you to realize that even though it looks sorrowful, you don't have to walk in the sorrow. My God. You can walk in the victory because God's got it together. Yes. And this is this is the whole this whole thing that I'm studied has has let me see what God did, what his plan was, was to multiply. My God, that's incredible. To multiply himself so that the enemy would not have a heyday, but we would have, we would have this God inside of us to talk to us, to speak to us, to encourage us, to lift us up, to heal us, to all of these things that God God. can do because he lives in us and we can do, and we can be the, look, look who's over, God sent, we prayed and, and and we prayed that God would send, uh, I prayed showers uh, of God's uh, comfort would come and I spoke some things and I don't know how many of you spoke, whatever you spoke. And those were interceding for her on her behalf. And God is doing those things because that is the will of God. He doesn't want to feel like she's a victim. He wants her to be victorious and courageous. Mm, And so mm, he's, mm. he's, he's doing this by our intercession. He's, we're speaking those things against, we're putting a stop to what the enemy wants to do with it. And we are, we are intervening in his, Come on. Plans to bring Thank destruction, you. to destroy, to kill, mm. to steal. Hey, da, 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 da. Hey, go and we, we are making this intercession yes, and we God. are stopping him dead and uh, the enemy dead in its tracks. Shut up, and shut up, shut up. Now the enemy stopped and now what God wants is beginning to transform itself into the Come on. situation. Yes, hey. This is how it works. This is what God wanted. Thank you. Ah. And some, sometimes we go through stuff, yes, but we're still at the end of everything we go through is this victory. 
Yes. God carries us through stuff so we can experience it. But now, you know, we are, we are a tool to the world. We have been exercised in different avenues of, yeah, we've been, we've had to go through some things, you know, distress. We've had to go through, through some persecution. We had to go through some tribulation. Uh, we had to go through some peril. But I'll guarantee every one of you have, has a testimony how God brought you through it. Yes. Every this, one is of what the, yes, this is what the world needs. The world needs to know that there's something good, not bad, at the end of the tunnel. Thank you. And when we when we are this witness before the world, when they see it, sometimes it's not about what we can tell them. It's they, about they're what watching us. They, yeah. They see I got this. You. I got you. Yes. And they and they go, uh, they shouldn't be acting like that. They should, you know, the normal way the enemy does, the world knows. They got a cycle going. What happens is it looks good, they get involved, and then it turns out bad. And then it goes, looks good, get, gets involved, and it turns out bad. That's how the world goes. Yeah. But it's kind of reverse for us. Come on. Something bad comes, but yet at the end, there's a victory. Say, this is what the Lord did. This is how the Lord did it. And that's how our faith, our faith begins to rise up when we have this relationship with the Lord. And, they, and we tie it in with his word. How exciting can that be? That we see God working in all of these different things we might go through. And now he wants to use us to comfort somebody else that might be in that place. And he, he uses us in, in our intercession so that we can bring about the will of God. I mean, what a wonderful thought. It's not a thought. It's actually reality. This is what God planned. Way back in the Old Testament, this prophetic, you know, prophetic things where God said I'm, that he was going to send this comforter. Way back. And we live in the other, other side of that thing. We have this Holy Spirit. We have this comforter now. My God, come on. And we are on the victory side of things. All the things that we go through, we're on the victory side. Okay, I'm going to stop right here, Sister Wilkes. Okay, in Jesus' name. I'm, My God. I'm excited. I'm excited too, Sister Zeno. Thank you for um, for the teaching. Hallelujah. 